Hey, what's up? Welcome to this video. I am particularly excited for this one to be an after video because we all know I have been dreading these two CT myelograms since before they were even ordered for me. One week ago, I went in for two CT myelograms on back-to-back -back days. In this video, I'm going to explain how it went and how it felt. Since I did get two myelograms, I will share some of the differences that I experienced between the two procedures, and then I'll also share some pain management tips for during the procedure and afterwards, just in case you need to go through this too. After the myelogram on the second day, I went in that afternoon to get a blood patch. It actually ended up being a fibrin glue patch, but we went ahead and did a targeted patch to make sure that those two holes were sealed that were made to put the dye in for the myelograms. And after an hour of monitoring, I was sent home to recover. A few days later, I flew home, and then I came down with a horrible cold, and I am just getting over that cold. I actually don't even want to be that generous with it. Tomorrow, I will be getting over this cold. The last thing you want three or four days post patch is to have a horrible cough and be coughing up green mucus. TMI, but literally, I'm up coughing up green mucus, trying so hard not to cough because I don't wanna blow those holes back open. But that has been the worst part of the recovery for me. The procedure itself sucked. Let's get into the nitty gritty of that. But if you need to get your myelograms, guys, do it. I know it's nerve wracking going in, and even though it's painful, it is super duper fast and it's so worth it to get those answers that you need. Let's get into the details. Been a long day with the toddlers, but a fun day, actually. Let's start with the general, how the procedure went and felt. I did vlog the first day of the procedure, and so in that vlog you get things like the timestamps. Am I migraine, Jen? Maybe I'm migraine, Jen. If you watch the vlog of the first day of the procedures, you'll be able to see the timestamps for when I was allowed to eat last and when I checked in. It was like three hours for the last meal. They said I could hydrate all the way up until the scan. I had to check in an hour to an hour and a half early so that they could ask me a trillion questions and take all of my vitals get me all changed, make sure all of my jewelry was off. They also inserted my IV at that point, and we had to do a couple of blood tests to check things like my kidney function and to do a pregnancy test even though I was on my period. Why do I keep being on my period for blood patches? It's kind of funny. The IV was not absolutely necessary for a myelogram. I did not have an IV on the second day myelogram, but on the first day since they needed to draw blood for those blood tests, they decided to just insert an IV just in case. You know, I'm already getting the poke and I might need it later for medications. So that was the decision that we made on the first day and on the second day I did not get an IV. I got all changed, gown open in the back and they wheeled me back over to the room. When I got in the room they had to verify name and birthday and then they had me transfer over to the bed that would be sliding in and out of the CT scanner. Now on top of the bed there was this wedge the wedge was flat on top and then it had the wedge on one side and at the bottom of that there was a stack of pillows for me to make myself comfortable. I laid on my left side but on both days my hips were up at the top of the wedge and my back went down the slope and my head went on the pillows with my neck in a slight kink. They started out by sliding me in and out of the scanner a few times to check my positioning and make some markings on my back. They needed to figure out exactly where that needle was gonna go. This is also the point at which they gave me some of my coping tools. And at this point, it's really important to make sure that you're super comfortable because you're gonna be laying there with the needle in your back sliding in and out for a good like 10 minutes or so. So you wanna make sure that you don't have any urges to move. When I was laying on my side, they actually started me with my neck unkinked, but I was already tilted downward. They gave me this nice little blanket that was rolled up to spoon. They put another pillow in between my legs. I had a nice warm blanket on top of my legs. I really enjoyed that. The insertion of the needle itself honestly was not too bad. They do use a local anesthetic, so you get a little bit of a pinch and a burn, and it does go in pretty deep, so you do get a good bit of the pinch and a burn, but no more than a couple of minutes total. 
and the doctors who do this have done this a lot of times. So you're in good hands and odds are you're going to have just a tiny bit of discomfort during that part. They wait a little bit to make sure you really are numb, but other than that, you have nothing else to calm your mind or your body, just your own thoughts and your own breathing techniques. Whatever you brought in, whatever you've got, put it all on the table because you're gonna need it. Next step, they put in the introducer, I think is what they called it. It's a slightly bigger needle that your smaller puncture needle is going to go through to make sure that the hole that goes into your spinal column is as small as possible. So they go in with the introducer into your already numbed back. And if you're lucky, like my second day myelogram, that was not painful at all. It definitely gave me the heebie-jeebies to hear them talking about, we're through the muscle. Have you hit the ligament yet? Oh, is that CSF coming out? But I don't wanna hear it. Seriously grossed me out. But my back was numb, so it really wasn't bad. Just a little bit of pressure. Unfortunately, on the first day when the needle started to go in, it wasn't quite at the right angle. So as they were pushing it in, they had to keep adjusting it and that twisting motion, that kind of twerking, twerking, not twerking, that twerking didn't feel very good on my back. And this needle insertion was CT guided. So they were sliding me in to see where the needle was and then bringing me back out. And they were also standing back and looking at the angle of it and then standing back over here and deciding whether it was up or down correctly. So they took a lot of care in making sure that the needle was very slowly and what's the word I'm looking for? Particularly placed. The parts I was probably the most nervous about going in were when the needle actually punctured my fecal sac and when the dye went in, because those are the two parts that I thought might be the most painful. When the needle punctured the fecal sac, I didn't know whether or not the lidocaine was going to be numbing the area. I just knew that there are a lot of nerves that go on in there, and I didn't really want a needle being involved in all of it. On the first day, as the needle entered my sac, I could feel my whole butt just curl under, like, I, well, I don't need to stand up. Like my outside butt muscles, not like my actual butt itself, but everything kind of curled under as I got punctured, but there was no shooting sensations. Even though I did feel a couple of shooting sensations as the needle was inserted a little bit earlier, literally once for like two seconds. The second day, I actually asked them to warn me before they punctured the fecal sac and they didn't and they went through and then the guy was like, is that CSF? And then the lady goes, yeah. And I was like, okay, so I guess we're in. I didn't say that out loud, but in my head I was thinking that. So that was weird. Hopefully they knew they were at the fecal sac already before they saw the CSF coming out, because if not, that's a little concerning. But it didn't hurt. I didn't feel anything and nothing went wrong. So it was perfect. And then they slid me in, they verified that the needle was in the proper place, and then they brought me back out. And they told me, all right, it's time for us to start putting in the contrast. Before the contrast, they put in some saline. And the saline is just to give you a little bit more volume and hopefully make it so that the contrast can spread a little bit more easily. That's what they told me. I was nervous about the saline maybe feeling a little bit weird or about it giving me too much pressure in my head because my head was already on a downward slope. But what ended up happening is that the saline was awesome. The saline felt so good and I felt my shoulders relaxing as it was going in. It felt like a massage. I was very into it. But then the contrast dye, literally dead opposite. The contrast dye is very much a burning sensation and then it's just on literally your entire central nervous system. So it sucks. It just burns. I did describe some of the feeling in my vlog that I did immediately after the procedure. So watch that if you want details of what I was thinking right after it happened. But right now, the things that I'm remembering the most are how single-sided it was, and, and that's super weird because a lot of my things are bilateral, at least somewhat. But since the dye is heavier than your brain fluid, it just falls down with gravity. And so only the side that I was laying on was in a ton of pain. 
I was really thankful that the doctors took care to insert the dye very slowly. And immediately before the dye went in was when they kinked my neck. And what that did was it relieved me from needing to feel the dye in my brain until after all the scanning and stuff was done. I feel like that saved me a lot of agony because it made it so that it was less space on my body that was in pain at once. And then I was able to add more pain later once I had learned how to cope with this kind of pain. So speaking of coping with the pain, one thing that they did give me was these aromatherapy packets. And it's this brand. I got this directly from the nurses. This is only the lid of one. This is the seal that you rip off of it. But what it came off of was this little white thing that's like a tray that I could sniff during the myelogram. And it's so nice during the procedure, trust me. So here's what happened. No needles yet, they just marked my back and everything was ready to go, all lined up. They went ahead and slid me in, and the machine goes, hold your breath, and you just, and the thing is like spinning, it goes, It's like all charged up, then it says, hold your breath, that thing. And then it goes, <sighs> slides you. You feel way cooler than you are, and then you have a little heart attack because now you know the needle is coming because they just did your baseline scan and you're like, ah. So, yeah. So then the fun part comes, and by that I mean not the fun part. I like to be very lighthearted about these things because, you know, it's quick and then it's over and it's fine. We can handle it, we can do tough things. But this myelogram, the dye, sorry, was pretty invasive. It was very invasive. It was mildly traumatizing for like five minutes. On the first day that I was in for the myelogram, when the needle got to my epidural space, but before it went into my fecal sac, I had to call a timeout. I got really, really clammy suddenly, and they offered to get me some wet washcloths for my forehead and my neck, and also like my arms. They kind of just wiped me down a little bit so I'd feel better again. And one of the kind nurses came out with one of these wrapped in the towel, and it became the thing that I grabbed and bit and sniffed while the dye was coming up into my brain. Now this has a lot of mint in it. It has lavender, peppermint, spearmint, and ginger, but that mintiness really lights up. Your nose, it lights up your eyes, and for a migrainey person, it's even a little bit painful. And so sniffing this, just having it super close to my nose, just lighting up that mint, made it so that when the dye was trying to burn my brain from the inside, my brain was like, wait, is that burn from the dye? Is that burn from the mint? What is this feeling? And so this essential oil thing seriously saved my sanity in there. In addition, I was holding hands with one of the nurses. I very much need to be held when I am feeling upset, so I shamelessly just asked someone to hold my hand. Highly recommend doing that if you feel like it would help you. I also mentioned I had that thing to hold and I was biting the washcloth that was holding my essential oils and I was also doing low deep moaning, hypnobirthing moaning, which I asked my doctor ahead of time, is this okay, will this be too distracting? And she said, no, do what you need to do to cope with the pain. One of the nurses commented that I looked like I was in extreme pain but that I was coping very well and I took that as a really big compliment because that's really what I wanted to accomplish. I want to be a very easy patient for them. I don't wanna be making this more difficult than it needs to be. So I felt like we all made a really good team. Even though I held it down during the procedures, after both procedures, on the way back to the room, is that room called the triage? Is that where I was in my pre-op? I went back to my recovery room. The whole way back both days, I just wept. An emotional release, an adrenaline release, even though it was consensual, it was just invasive. There's something about it being in your spine and in your brain 
and that painful and for that long that just I needed to process it in a way I wasn't expecting but I can't stress enough that it was maybe 20 minutes of pain total and then it was done. Let's talk about as the dye was wearing off in the waiting room. When they unkinked my neck I felt the dye come up into my head and every time the dye moved again it was really painful. I could handle sitting there for a little bit and it would subside for a little bit but then eventually it would just start burning again and I would feel the urge to move again. But then moving again would make it burn in that new place, whatever new place was now the lowest point for that dye to move to. And it felt really inescapable for like 10 or 20 minutes but then it was over and I was comfortable and I was able to just be in kind of a migraine post drone feeling where the acid has subsided, but I feel sore. Totally tolerable if you're going through leak stuff, if you're going through migraine stuff. You've been through stuff this bad before, and you can do it. One other thing that I found interesting that was different between the two days was that I got horrible nausea right after the procedure on the second day, but I got no nausea from the first procedure. And interestingly, my first procedure with no nausea ended up being a normal scan and my second procedure where I did get nausea ended up having an area of interest. So I thought that was kind of particularly interesting and I don't know if maybe other patients have had that experience before. By the way, if you're finding this helpful and you appreciate these videos, do give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, thank you, and hit subscribe if you want to keep following my journey. Another thing that might be related to that nausea, but I'm not completely sure, is on that myelogram, even though my neck was kinked, I was still feeling the dye move into my face. And I thought that was kind of weird because the first day the dye stayed in the sack. And the first day I didn't feel the dye anywhere but in the sack. And then the second day we have a place maybe of interest. And the second day I was feeling the dye in other places even though I was kinked. You know, gravity only goes one direction, so how is it? You see what I'm saying? I'm not going to get my results for another few days, but yeah, I still don't have my hopes up. I don't, because you never know with leak stuff, you really, you truly never know. I really do truly hope that something showed up on this scan. I hope I'm right. I hope that was a thing. It was on my left side from my neck, but I'm not naive. I know it could go any way and you know I will update you the second I know something. And one last thing I wanted to mention is that after the myelogram was super validating for having a leak because after the myelogram I had a verified actual leak in my lumbar spine. So after the myelogram when I stood up I was only able to stand up for like two minutes and then all of my symptoms came roaring back and I had to lay down. That's super validating because I didn't have new symptoms after the CT myelogram. I had my symptoms coming faster and then over the course of the day I gained more and more upright time. So around noon right after the procedure or an hour after the procedure I could only be upright like two minutes but around four o'clock I was up for about 10 minutes and then that night I was up for about 30 minutes. And then the next day, well, the next day I went in for another myelogram. But that morning I felt back down to my baseline. Whether or not we found something from doing this invasive imaging, I'm very, very excited that we're onto something. That afternoon, the afternoon of that second myelogram, I got a targeted fibrin patch. My next video is going to be comparing that non-targeted large volume blood patch that I did before versus doing a targeted fibrin patch for holes where we knew the exact location. I actually felt quite a bit of difference both during and after the procedure between those two procedures. Did that make sense? Whatever. It's late. I'm getting migrainy. I'll see you guys in that next video.